Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is a dark film. Some have harshly criticized the depiction of certain characters and plot points, often based on just a single viewing of the theatrical cut of the film. However, for many people, opinions of the film have improved, sometimes substantially, by revisiting the film, either in the theatrically released form, but quite often by exploring the director's cut, also known as the ultimate edition. Why is this? Some people are more drawn to and appreciative of Zack Snyder's visual style. They are willing to give his work some consideration rather than writing it off based on first impressions. So how do we go about it? To start, let's consider Batman v Superman from a different perspective. One might be tempted to view the film as an action blockbuster. It undoubtedly has action elements. However, from the point of view of the main character, Bruce Wayne, it is a psychological drama. The description of psychological drama from allmovie.com is quite strongly reflected in the presentation of Batman v Superman. In Hollywood, psychological drama is usually used as an approach merging with other larger genres that stress mental struggles over the physical. The source of conflict is not only the characters themselves, but the conflict that exists within them as well. And it is usually presented using expressionistic aesthetics, distorted reality, dream sequences, non-linear narratives. Predominantly, the cause is rooted in an event or trauma from the protagonist's past, one that will either be worked through or repressed and ignored to the point of mental or physical destruction. In the film, dream sequences offer us an important window on Bruce Wayne's mental state and subconscious struggles. These dream sequences are typically signaled by the use of slow motion, which implies that they are not a normal mode of perception. But this use of slow motion also gives viewers more time to observe what is presented on screen and consider what it means symbolically rather than literally. As with our own dreams, they are not necessarily documentary footage. Rather, they are impressions conjured by the mind and open to interpretation. With iconic analysis, we can also explore cinematic subtext. That is to say, the symbolism encoded in the visuals. Visual subtext is to be found not just in these dream sequences and dramatic scenes, but interestingly also in the peak of the film's action scenes. Unpacking cinematic subtext requires a level of participation from the audience, an active engagement with the material on screen. With this in mind, let's jump into our analysis of Bruce Wayne's psychology in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when we upload new videos. But a word of warning. Over the centuries, people have drawn links between specific dream elements and psychological challenges faced by the one having the dream. Bruce Wayne's dreams include being lost in the woods, which commonly represents being overwhelmed, falling, often representing a feeling of powerlessness, and a monster, which often represents some form of denial or avoidance. The film opens with a dream sequence that depicts scenes from a defining period in Bruce Wayne's life. We start at a funeral procession from which young Bruce runs into the woods. This stems from him being overwhelmed by grief. We cut to the happy family confronted by a stranger as they leave the theatre. A gun is drawn. We cut to Bruce running in the forest. He stumbles and falls. We then get an extreme tilt shot inverting the image, symbolic of his world being turned upside down. We cut to Thomas Wayne clenching his fist. He swings at the gunman. The gunman fires. We cut to Bruce running in the forest. The ground beneath him gives way. He is falling from light into darkness. We cut to Martha as she rushes forward and tries to push the gun down, but the gunman gets the upper hand. The gun is pointed at her. Pearls trace a path that leads to a dark and violent end. Wealth and violence become inextricably entangled. The gun fires again. The pearls are scattered. A less gruesome standing for blood perhaps, but pearls are also symbolic of wisdom. So the pearls scattered in all directions also represents the loss of a mother's wisdom. As Martha Wayne falls, we cut to Bruce hitting rock bottom. We cut back to see a pearl landing on Martha's hand. Young Bruce lets out a muted scream. His father reaches out and utters his final word. Martha. 
we cut to an extreme close-up of Martha's pupil dilating. The pupil is a dark void, and the dilation symbolic of how the darkness in Bruce grows with Martha's death. The pull that we saw landing on Martha's hand drops into the drain in Gotham, but via dream logic it lands in the cave of bats alongside young Bruce. At the bottom of the cave, Bruce finds the bats, and rather poetically, this is where the creators of Batman are credited. The sequence closes with a colony of bats swarming around young Bruce, seemingly lifting him out of the cave. However, in the closing monologue, the voice of adult Bruce states, In the dream, they took me into the light. A beautiful lie. Another major trauma in Bruce Wayne's life is the loss of Robin. In the Batcave, just before Bruce prepares to go to Lex Luthor's Library of Metropolis Benefit, we see Bruce staring at the Batsuit. It is filled with an ominous darkness. The darkness of the Batman is once again visually represented in the nightmare future. When Superman unmasks Bruce, we see the cowl presented as filled with a dark emptiness. Here in the Batcave, there are subtle camera push-in movements. The visual conjures the quote from Friedrich Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil. He who fights monsters might take care, lest he thereby become a monster. For when you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. As Bruce leaves the Batcave, he walks past a vandalized Robin suit, alluding to the loss of his partner in crime fighting, one who looked up to him as a father figure, another person he could not protect. Another major trauma in Bruce Wayne's life is the Black Zero event, where the Kryptonian invasion leaves a sizable portion of downtown Metropolis in rubble, and thousands of civilians perishing. Bruce, once again, is a powerless observer. Zod and Superman crash into Wayne Financial. Bruce sees heat vision blasting through the building, compromising its structural integrity, which results in a catastrophic collapse. We see Bruce running into the cloud of dust. This mirrors the way he ran into the forest as a child. In the midst of this tragedy, Bruce sees a child staring upwards, transfixed. She's about to be crushed by debris, Bruce swoops in and saves her just in the nick of time. This girl's name is Sage. She is in shock and disbelief. Bruce tries to comfort her and asks where her mother is. Sage points up to a skyscraper, but the top portion of the building is no longer there. A sonic boom draws his attention. Bruce looks up to the sky, seeing Superman and Zod crashing through another building. An ominous tune rumbles as a simmering rage builds in him. As the crane shot pulls out, Bruce becomes smaller in frame, implying a feeling of powerlessness. And on the left of frame, we see the logo of Wayne Financial, inverted. Once again, Bruce Wayne's world is turned upside down. The shot implies a vulnerability to Bruce as he embraces the child. Sage is perhaps symbolic of Bruce Wayne's inner child. According to psychologist Dr. Nicola Perry, the inner child is based on our past experiences, our unmet needs on our emotional wounds, on how we learn to show up in the world, formed early in childhood. We carry that inner child with us, and it becomes a sort of lens through which we see our current adult experiences. The film's introduction of the Batman draws from filmmaking that is more typical of the horror genre. In this case, we first see him up in the corner of the room behind Officer Rucker, the POV character in the scene. Startled, Officer Rucker panics and opens fire. The Batman then scuttles on the ceiling, reminiscent of the 1990 film The Exorcist 3. This puts forth the notion of Bruce as a man possessed, but possessed by what? As Bruce Wayne enters, he sees a stained glass window. This is a reference to 17th century paintings like Luca Giordano's Fall of the Rebel Angels and Guido Reni's Michael Defeats Satan. However, the background of the stained glass image includes modern skyscrapers on fire, not exactly Renaissance appropriate imagery. It's fair to interpret this as Bruce Wayne's subconscious mind associating the blue draped and red caped Archangel Michael with Superman. He places a bouquet of flowers, obscuring Thomas's name, while Martha's name remains prominently visible. Dark blood oozes out of his mother's tomb. Bruce reaches out and touches the liquid. 
With the blood on his hands, symbolic of his feelings of guilt, a massive demonic bat bursts forth and attacks Bruce, biting him on the neck. This vampiric dream imagery is symbolic of Bruce being psychologically possessed by the demon bat. The horrific death of Bruce Wayne's mother filled him with feelings of guilt, and in the wake of this trauma, the demon bat was born and it consumed him. Being a monster in a dream, it suggests that the Batman is a form of denial or avoidance. During the Batman-Superman fight, Bruce is particularly brutal. As mentioned already, he's a man possessed by something darker. In the fight, Bruce externalizes his pain by inflicting harm on Superman in ways that parallel his previous traumas. He throws the depowered Superman down into the atrium at the abandoned building, replicating the fall into the cave of bats that Bruce himself suffered as a child. He then drags the depowered Superman with a cable and swings him around, smashing him through concrete pillars, replicating the way that the Kryptonians smash through buildings in Metropolis. Earlier, Bruce had fashioned the raw kryptonite into a spearhead resembling the shape of the Kryptonian scout ship. Bruce, now with Superman laying powerless at his feet, uses the spear, cutting into Superman's face. From our vantage point, the direction of the cut matches the direction that the Kryptonian scout ship was shown cutting through the skyline of Metropolis. So through the presentation of visuals, the fight night battle is symbolic of a return to the cave and of Bruce externalizing past traumas. Reflecting back on the opening monologue of the film, there was a time above, a time before, there were perfect things, diamond absolutes, but things fall, things on earth, and what falls is fallen. In the dream they took me into the light, a beautiful lie. This tells us that Bruce, in retrospect, knows that the Batman persona had not taken him into the light. It had not been the answer to his deep psychological need. Bruce Wayne remains stuck, stuck in a psychological cave, and what emerged from that cave was a dark persona. Over the years, this dark persona has cast a shadow in his life, a shadow that with each subsequent trauma has eaten away at his humanity. Facing certain death, the depowered Superman, who had previously learnt Batman's true identity, rather than pleading for Bruce to spare his own life, instead makes an appeal, an appeal to Bruce Wayne's humanity. Find him. Save Martha. There are many ways to look at this development in the story. There are many videos on YouTube that speculate on this, so feel free to look into those if you are so inclined. The simplest, perhaps, is that of misinterpretation. So in essence, Bruce hears Superman's words in a way that resonates with him emotionally rather than hearing the practical content that Superman might have intended. We are shown that Superman saying the dying words of Bruce Wayne's father triggers a memory of the trauma. Was this enough to change Bruce Wayne's mind about killing Superman? It's unclear, however, it is sufficient for him to pause for a moment, giving Lois Lane time to arrive on the scene. As Bruce Wayne shouts, Lois proceeds to dive in front of the enraged Batman to protect Superman, which is similar in principle to how Martha Wayne dove in front of the gunman to protect young Bruce. Bruce sees the plight of both of his parents reflected in Superman and Lois. He has lost control, a failure he cannot accept, and with apparent self-loathing he discards the spear. <laughs> Reflecting back on what Senator Finch said in the news conference, in a democracy good is a conversation, not a unilateral decision. Lois Lane now facilitates dialogue between the two. With Bruce coming to terms with how rage had blinded him, he leaves on a new quest. He resolves to save Martha Kent, which the film implies that Bruce assumes as a surrogate for the mother that he had lost as a child. My mother needs me. Wait. I'll make you a promise. Martha won't die tonight. I think when Batman makes the decision to rescue Martha, 
as Superman's mother. In a way, he's redeeming his own sense of powerlessness that he had when he could not save his own mother. During the Martha rescue action sequence, we see an inversion of a visual from the beautiful lie sequence, in which a wooden structure had given way, causing Bruce to fall down into the cave of bats. In contrast, here we see him breaking through the wooden floorboards and rise upwards. During the hand-to-hand -hand combat, we can also draw a cinematic inference to Man of Steel. When Zod and Fiora were shown to threaten and then assault Martha Kent, Superman rushes to Martha's rescue, tackling Zod and proceeding to punch him repeatedly. Where is the codex? This sentiment perfectly mirrors Bruce Wayne's resolve in this action scene, where Martha Kent represents a surrogate for the mother that Bruce had lost as a child. In the final portion of the scene, we cut to a smaller room where Anatoly Konaezev and another mercenary had Martha tied up. In a nod to the Dark Knight Returns graphic novel, Batman bursts through the wall, seizing the gun. This action also mirrors the demon bat that we saw in the Wayne Mausoleum dream sequence, which had burst through Martha's tomb to attack Bruce. So this connection implies that Bruce is still tapping into the darkness of the demon bat, and explains some of the brutality on display during this rescue sequence. In a brief standoff that includes dialogue closely matching that of The Dark Knight Returns, Kanayazev points his flamethrower at Martha and threatens. Drop it. Kill her. Me, I'll do it. Bruce, assessing the situation, replies that he believes Kanayazev, then fires a single shot at the fuel tank. Kanayazev unwittingly sets leaking fuel on fire. Bruce uses the opportunity to rush forward towards Martha, diving over her with his flame retardant cape protecting her from the ensuing explosion. Having saved Martha, Bruce has emotionally redeemed himself. The demon bat has served its purpose and Bruce Wayne is primed to transition into the type of Batman that fans are more familiar with. In Heroes Park, Doomsday throws Superman through some black monoliths. These monoliths are obviously symbolic of the buildings destroyed in the Black Zero event, even having the names of the dead engraved on them. In principle, this action mirrors the way that the possessed Batman used the grappling hook to swing Superman through the pillars during the fight night sequence. As the dazed Superman is on the ground, Doomsday breaks another one of the monoliths, walks over and then uses it to bash Superman over the head. This mirrors the way that the possessed Batman ripped a sink from the bathroom wall and proceeded to bash Superman over the head with it during the fight night scene. This supports the notion that Doomsday is symbolic of Bruce Wayne's rage monster, the Demon Bat. As Superman plunges the spear into Doomsday, the ground gives way and Diana loses her footing. The Lasso of Truth slips off Doomsday. Doomsday grabs Superman and stabs him in return. Superman pulls himself in closer and plunges the Kryptonite spear deeper ultimately vanquishing the monster. Superman and Doomsday collapse, dead. Bruce is the first person to arrive alongside Superman. He wraps Superman in the red cape and passes the body down to Wonder Woman an overt homage to the descent from the cross. Bruce then joins Lois and Wonder Woman, another overt homage, this time to the Pieta. If Bruce is a religious person, then perhaps he might consider this to be a religious experience. However, if we reflect on the beautiful lie dream sequence, then Martha Wayne's death is marked by a pearl that falls onto her hand. This pearl was able to transition to young Bruce in the Cave of Bats. Here, in the death of Superman, the hero is positioned in the hand of Doomsday. Superman aligns with the pearl, implying that this moment is able to reach Bruce Wayne in his psychological cave. 
Let's take another look at the sequence of events in the death of Superman, but this time with more of an interpretive eye. Losing the support of Wonder Woman, who is the symbol of love and compassion, the lasso of truth loses its grip. Doomsday, symbolic of Bruce Wayne's rage monster, is able to take a hold of Superman, the hero that Bruce can now identify with. Doomsday then stabs through the diamond enclosed S. This means something. It's not an S. On my world, it means hope. So this is symbolic of Bruce succumbing to nihilism. Superman accepts the severity of his wound. He pushes through the pain and ultimately neutralizes the rage monster. So Bruce Wayne's psychological struggle is reflected in Superman's physical struggle, the tragic hero with a hole in his heart. Superman accepts his wound and perseveres and does not give up until he has vanquished the rage monster. And in the end, the demon's grip on him is released. The grieving Lois looks to Wonder Woman, who can offer no consolation. As Lois continues to grieve, we cut to Bruce, with flames behind him gradually ascending, as if emerging from an underground hell. In this analysis, this shot marks the moment that Bruce emerges from his psychological cave as a changed character. In a recent live commentary event, Zack Snyder highlighted this shot as his favorite Batman shot in the film. It is sad that this film is casually written off by some as just a dumb action movie, when analysis reveals that it is rich in poetic visuals and cinematically layered. By using the framework of psychological drama as a jumping off point and focusing on cinematic subtext, we've uncovered nuance and sophistication in the film's depiction of the main character, Bruce Wayne. This is a film that trusts the audience. It trusts that they will choose to engage with the film. After all, as viewers, we can only receive what it puts forth if we are willing to meet it midway. We started off by saying that Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is a dark film, but that's not the whole picture. It's a dark film, but it is a hopeful film. It shows us that in moments of great adversity, that there's a pearl to be found, if only we would reach towards it. How has your opinion on the film changed since the first time you saw it? Do you agree or disagree with any of our interpretations? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and as always I wish you peace, joy and love.